This audio fiction may contain elements not suitable for children. Listener discretion is advised. The development was emotionally crushing. A large portion of the army had deserted, leaving the guards on duty, the surviving court members, in the service of the grown Kruk royal family. The three remaining daughters and son had endured the siege well, with hope keeping them optimistic and unweathered by the circumstances outside their castle walls. Olex, the only prince, paced the cluttered dining area floor. His youthful face was contorted by the news that his country no longer had an army to speak of, save for the forces within Morkleg's walls. With his hands behind his back and his eyes on the ornate green carpeting, he tried to formulate a plan that he could bring to assistance in the court members. Lizthor, the court sorcerer, watched the prince attentively. Lizthor was slouched forward on the bench with his wooden staff standing. His fingers curled around the arc of the scepter. You could use the magic that made your family, he muttered. After the words left him, he winced, expecting a harsh reaction. Olek stopped. Do we have the ingredients to begin the ritual? He asked. It was a plan he had considered. They did not know the specifics of ritual preparation. Vizdor's eyes shifted to read the prince's expression. We do. Of course, we will need more should the ritual need repeating. But for now, we can begin. Vizdor used his staff to steady himself while he got to his feet. If you and your sisters wish to take this course of action, Olex looked into the sorcerer's eyes. We will gladly do whatever the gods ask of us. We are here to serve our people. He pounded his fist into his open palm. We will remind those still with us why our great-great-great-grandmother was first crowned. Fizdor gave a supportive smile and nodded. Please, your majesty, gather your sisters and meet me in my quarters. I'll begin gathering what we need to turn the tides of luck. The sorcerer's staff clacked with an atypical rhythm as he shambled toward the door. Olex watched the man in flowing green, black, and gold robes and sashes. That man carries our hope. The prince smiled and rested his hand on his chest. When this is said and done, he and his family need recognition, thanked for their service and loyalty to House Grunkrack. With renewed optimism, the prince hurried to find his siblings. Helga surveyed the faces of the court members who were present during the coup. They were putting on brave masks for the social aspects of being forced into the same isolating event in areas. Nobody wanted to be the first to lose hope, let alone be the first to show it after the army deserted the grown crack family. I have no idea what we're going to do, she whispered. We'll think of something, Merka said with a cheerful simper. Her bright eyes revealed that she believed what she said. Helga adored her youngest sibling's unshakable happiness. Helga ruffled Merka's dark, wavy locks. Thank you for being you, Helga whispered. When Merka replied with a quirked eyebrow, Helga touched her cheek. I adore your pluck, she explained. Her eyes grazed over the faces of the others present. Their extravagant clothing had become threadbare, stained, and wrinkled, while the barrier around the castle kept the invading force away. The time spent together without the freedom of walks in the fresh air and leisure, frequent baths and lavish meals, had whittled their hearts to dust. So Lee broke away from conversation with the aristocrat. She bowed her head respectfully, then she hurried to join her sisters. They're breaking and we cannot hold that against them, she said in a harsh whisper. So Lee kept her eyes squarely on Helga. So Lee balled her hands in her fists. Killing the betrayer was an act of war, and we were tricked into it. Calm yourself, Helga said. He isn't dead. The second those boots were on our soil, they declared war. Being twice in the right doesn't better our situation, Soli muttered. She folded her arms and kept a scowl out of sight of the others present. Everything will be okay, Marga said. She patted Soli's hand. We have the best sorcerer with us. Soli looked at Merka's rosy cheeks and happy grin. Then she scoffed. 
not without a way out of this. We're facing down a war. As cute as your sunshine attitude can be, we need to take action. I think we should fight back. What? Helka's voice went cold from disbelief. We have warriors, we have weapons, Soli shrugged. What don't you understand? The debate between the princesses was interrupted by their brother's reappearance in the ballroom with a majority of the combined residents. The three sisters turned to Oleg's. He huffed and doubled forward. We need... Several breaths. To move... Quick breathing. The guests! To where? Soli asked. Helga planted her hands on her hips. Also, why would we move them from the ballroom? Everybody has space here, even if it's minimal. It's away from the sides of the keep that will be attacked if the barrier falls. Oleg stood, now having caught his breath. The barrier will fall, he said flatly. We need it to for the plan to work. Now let's move our guests. Then after, we meet this door in his quarters. What are we going to do? Marka asked. She looked to each of her older siblings. Olex walked toward their guest to gather everybody from the migration. I have no idea what our old wizard cooked up, but it better be good, Soli muttered. I'm sure it is the best we can do with no way to get more supplies or a larger army, Helga said, trying to hide her nervousness. She patted Marka's shoulder to reassure her. Let's help Olex now. Come with me.